Now let's talk a little bit about texturing, and this is by no means going to be an exhaustive overview of Substance Painter by, like I said, by any means. Uh, but we can talk a little bit about it and have a little bit of fun. Uh, the basics are uh, you have your eyes, iris, skull, teeth. These are your texture sets. Each one of these texture sets has a, uh, it's basically a material assigned to a section. If you just want to see one, if you want to see like just the skull, you can go over here and just isolate it. Uh, you want to see just the eyes, you can isolate those out, or you can just go through and turn off these uh, as you want. Of course, you can hold down Control, Alt, and right click, and you can uh, swap between these texture sets. And if we stick with the skull here, uh, basically while we have this main uh, this texture set selected, we can go over here to the layers and we can start adding material. So let's go down here, and we have regular materials. I say regular, they're just um, <laughs> Uh, basically, a uh, material is if you take a fill layer here, this is a fill layer, and this is a paintable layer. So basically, you can add a layer that you can paint on, or you can add a fill layer. Ideally, I only, I don't really like to use paint layers all that much unless I'm doing something very specific. The real cool stuff happens when you use a fill layer and proceduralism to kind of get what you want. Because the other cool thing is, if you can stack a bunch of this together, you can end up with a smart material, like these. And um, I'll show you a cool one. Uh, as we get there. But basically, we have this fill layer here. If I wanted to make him like red plastic, I could just choose uh, just choose any color. So here we have a red base color and then metallic. We either tell it, uh, do we want it to be metal or dielectric or a metal? Uh, roughness is how shiny it is. So the more towards black it is, the shinier it is. The more towards white it is, the more dusty it is. You can stamp normal information and height information. And that's about it. That's how you create a material. So some of these materials, if I just have a fill layer selected and I just touch one of these materials, it'll automatically fill with that material. So I can have human skin, aluminum, fabric, little knit fabric and stuff. And the cool thing about these is that if you're uh, into Substance Designer, uh, you can go into Substance Designer, create your own materials, and they can expose parameters to the end user. Uh, for example, this one has pretty simple uh, parameters. It has some uh, height range, height position, stuff like this, but it has a color parameter you can go through and uh, dial in the color that you want. Some of these have more or less, let's see if this one, let's go down here to pattern, let's tile this pattern up a little bit. So you can see this iron diamond right here um, has a bunch of parameters, and these are just exposed parameters that are created inside of the material uh, that are exposed to the end users. Now you can tile the uh, overall pattern, you can change the shape to diamond, to circle, to crescent, and if we need to tile it more, you can also go up here to the UV transform. So you can go up here to scale, and if you keep scaling it up, you're going to see it's going to keep scaling up or down. Uh, so now we get a really cool, like, metallic fish scales. And the other thing we can do is we can also rotate. So we can rotate this around, and right now we're using our UV projection. So if we go over here to our uh, 2D only, you're going to see as we're rotating it, it's basically just rotating just in a circle and it's going onto our UVs. If we change this from UV projection to triplanar projection, uh, that's going to disregard our UVs and kind of, this is, if you have a really noticeable seam, changing it to triplanar, if we go back here to uh, 3D, you can see it changes quite a bit. We have to go play around the scale a little bit to get back where we uh, kind of were. Um, but it gets, makes it a much more uniform. So our UVs were dictating it previously. If we go back here to UV projection, you're going to see, depending on where our UVs are, like the face, uh, is pointing kind of one direction and the jaw is pointing kind of one direction. See the scales are going left to right and then the jaw is going up and down. If you are going to use UV tiling like for a game engine, you want to make sure that your UVs are facing all in one direction or in the right direction to tile it. In here, if you're just going to bake it out to a texture, you can go to triplanar and now you're going to see they're all uniformly going uh, in one direction. So if I go over here and I change that scale so we can see a little bit better you're going to see uh, they're all going left to right. And it's kind of just fudging across any seams, uh, any UV seams that we have. And in fact, if we go over here back to the 2D only, you're going to see, uh, I'm trying to see if I can point out where, uh, you, if you could find where one seam ends and one seam begins, uh, you would see that it's it would be seamless. It's basically projecting, let's see if I can tell, have it show us here. Oh yeah, it's got the cube there. So see this cube, it's basically projecting uh, that, that pattern from that material onto your object, which allows it to kind of dis not disregard your UVs. It still knows your UVs are there, um, but it's not using the UVs to dictate the direction of the tiling pattern.